So let's find the standard deviation for the S&P 500 to equal sign STD. And when you see ST, like standard deviation, you'll see that Excel suggests a few things. Um, it's a long story as to why, but basically uh, choose a sample standard deviation. Okay, choose a sample standard deviation. Depending on the on the version of Excel that you have, you may just f uh, observe. If it's an older version, you will see standard deviation by itself. If that's all you have, then choose that. Okay, I'm going to choose a sample standard deviation. Okay, and all I have to do now is just highlight. I'm just going to left click and hold it and just highlight all of this column. So notice that the formula says, okay, uh, find the standard deviation of all the numbers that start in D4 and go up until, you know, D38. And close parentheses, press enter, and you get that the standard deviation is around 3%. 3% around up and down uh, with respect to the mean. Okay. Now it's nice that I put it this way because I always use the market first because this way it's there's, it's easier for a, a secondary reason that I'm about to show you. But right now, I can just drag this to the right, and it will repeat the same process, but for the other column. So once you do the work for one column, you can just drag it to the right, and it will do the, that for the second column. Okay. So I have these two standard deviations, and notice that right now it seems to be the case that Google has been around 6.5 percent standard deviation volatility and the market was around 3% during this same period of time so Google has been around twice as volatile as that of the market is that is that the beta no we also have to incorporate what the correlation because it, for systematic risk it's not important it's not necessarily important what the individual risk is which in this case means it seems to be like Google Google is twice as risky as the market but also what's important is the how the you know the correlation between Google and the market yeah, the lower the correlation you're right. Um, the less affected Google is by the market, then that means that this, the beta will be lower. So let's find the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient will be equal to, and then there's a function called corel. So just put C O R, and then as soon as you do that, Excel says, okay, this is the only function I've got with under those three letters. So yes, that's the one we want. So correlation. Double click. This is not very clear. So let me just go to F X. It says, give me the, give me the first array. Give me the first array, okay? Because it has to find the correlation or co-movement between two columns, right? Give me the first column. So I'll say, all right, the first column is this one. I want the correlation between the market and what is the second, the other thing that I want to measure, right? The correlation between the market and Google, right? To Google return. So for the second column or the second array, The first array, the second array, and press OK. Notice that this is the way this looks. Okay, separated by a comma, the two columns. Press OK, and you'll find out that the uh, correlation coefficient is around 59%. Okay, 0.59. Okay, so now let's find the beta based on this formula. What does this formula say? It says beta is equal to, so equal to, let's open parentheses. Just to follow the formula, uh, sigma sub i, where's the, the volatility of my company? Where is that? Right here. Click here. Divided by the sigma of the market. Where's the sigma or the volatility of the market? Right here. Okay. Close parentheses and that multiply times, so I have to use a star there, okay, times the correlation coefficient, which in this case is 0.59. Press enter and your beta is 1.27. So what does that mean? That Google stock is uh, slightly higher, right, than the uh, risk, has a systematic risk that is slightly higher than that of the market. So when the market goes up by 10%, um, the Google stock will go up by 12.7%. So there's more, it's more volatile than that of the market. Please keep in mind that very volatile companies can have betas of four or five. In the dot-com uh, you know, bubble, some companies had a betas of 14. Okay, it's amazing numbers. So, uh, this is one way you can find the beta. We already found it. It's 1.27. The other way is much easier, and that is the following. As long as you have returns for the market first and for your company second, you can also do it this way. You can also highlight the two columns, okay? And then go to Insert, and you'll see these charts. And depending on whether you're a Mac user or a Windows user, you will have them in specific locations, but you have these charts. And in the charts, there's one that has like the little dots, 
it's called scatter plot so I'm just going to click on this okay. choose the first one the most simple one and left click if everything went well then you should see you know these little dots here right just hover put the cursor over any of the dots and right click okay and there's an option that says add trend line add trend line click there and you'll see that it sh it shows you a a line a line that that if you had to if you had to kind of assess and say which is the straight line the best indicates the relationship between the market and Google returns then this will be it okay so what I want is scroll down you know where it says display equation and chart display equation and chart click there and when you do that it's very interesting because you get a little formula but the the, the, the interesting part of this formula is that you need to see the X there the number next to the X that's your beta so there's two different ways of let me get this out there's two different ways of getting your beta one is using the formula 1.27043 and the other way is just using the charts 1.27 you know 04 okay the reason of course here is that we have if you had to add more decimals and you see that you have much more points point 2704 you have more decimals in there but all we need is just the first four 1.2704 you have you get the same value for beta both in both approaches well some people would kind of like this approach because you don't have to use a formula I wanted to make sure that you understood how you would find it with the formula itself so that way there are two different ways of doing just that okay and you know in my case you know now this is this is from you know previous uh, information right but if I were to let's say go to Yahoo okay now remember this is this is you know, I'm assuming that I'm in April of, uh, uh, of 2018 right but if if you want today to find out what go to finance okay want to find out what Google uh, looks like as far as the beta is concerned here's a quote lookup just put GOG GOGL okay that is the company that is that's is Google basically right it's called alphabet and um, you will note that there are let's get that out of the way among the things that we see here is that the current beta to so today's with today's information is around 1.339 and uh, remember that we got a beta of 1.27 right so as you can see it's in the same uh, ballpark right we have the same uh, similar information okay by the way um, accessing this information is interesting uh, because you have other things that you can uh, look at but you can certainly if I want to download Google I can certainly go to historical data and let's say I want to download you know five years uh, of of information okay I wanted historical prices but I want monthly historical prices if I want to do all that in that I can just apply and download data and you see how it's downloading this for me let's give it a few seconds here it is so this um, this is not really uh, necessary for our purposes. I I'm just going to you know delete this part and this last column too. How, so when you remember how I we started our conversation in um, in my sample where I I basically started with prices for Google. Okay, this is the way I did it. I just basically down went to Yahoo Finance. Um, went to Yahoo Finance uh, download this information of course since I da just downloaded five years then you know this is a different time series but it just dr it just downloads all the prices and then you can start your beta calculation so if you want to find your own beta you could do that by downloading prices of course if you are not looking at Google if you're looking at a regional company then you would have to download prices from your uh, specific uh, stock exchange right so the critical component here is of course having uh, these this price is not only for your company but also for the market